Well, what's going on, everybody? This is Wrong Real, episode 372 of the podcast for Hardcore Cinephiles, where since the man who coined the phrase is here right beside me, Adam, what does this podcast cover? <laughs> it's everything from Jean-Luc Godard to Jean-Luc Picard. Oh, yeah. And today we have living legend Bill Plimpton, who has been very busy as of late. But Bill, welcome back to Wrong Real. Yes, yeah, so this is my uh, second time on here. Might be Third, I think we wow. did one for the Kickstarter campaign way back when. That's and right. for Revengeance. And I think we did yeah. a Revengeance one. And we also did one with Jim Lujan just on the on the showroom floor with yeah. uh, with right, John. Right. And, and actually, we should say John Holdery, who's also a wrong real regular. He is here <laughs> in the studio, but he is hard at work behind us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm very happy to be here. I feel very comfortable, very relaxed. Yeah, we have you on your sofa where you do the majority of your drawing, That's and right. uh, it always like seems like you're at your happiest when you just get to chill, put on your headphones, yes, and scribble yes, away for yeah. hours on. Well, end. It's, it's weird because I do have a drawing board just next to me, but I don't use the drawing board so much anymore. I don't use a light box. Mostly, I just sketch and draw and, and animate uh, sitting on the couch. Now, for people who might not have heard your previous episodes, just in general, what is your process when it comes to cranking out films and shorts and music videos like when do you do your drawing versus when do you actually kind of take care of business and work and do sound mixing and editing and that sort of thing well right now i'm working on my brand new feature film it's called slide it's a uh, it's very close to my roots it's uh, it takes place in oregon it's in the mountains with lots of fog and and trees and sasquatches in it and and um it's about this mythical cowboy kind of Clint Eastwood guy who comes into this very corrupt town called uh, Sourdough Creek and cleans up all the, uh, the the dirty guys, the scoundrels. And But it's a musical. It's very uh, Hank Williams, Patsy Cline kind of music. So we have some musicians that really thrive on that kind of music. So it's going to be a very cool film. Better than or worse than Paint Your Wagon? <laughs> <laughs> I saw that film. Is this written by you, Bill? This written film? by me and Jim Lujan. Okay. But in any case, uh, I did a rough storyboard, which are really tiny drawings that really are not very visual. And then once I get that done, then I go into the finished storyboard. And these are much larger drawings, and they're much more uh, detailed. You can see exactly what's going on, the backgrounds, the costumes. Then when I finish the, the detailed storyboards, then I go into the animation. And that's where the fun begins. So right now I'm just doing the storyboard so I can sit on the couch and do that. But once I get into the real animation, I have to use my drawing board and my light box. And I'll use a ballpoint pen. It's all going to be ballpoint pen. I'm going to do every drawing in the film. That takes about a year. And then we come in and do the uh, post-production. This is the editing, the coloring, the sound, the music, um, voices, all that stuff. Now, it seems like country western music is very near and dear to you. It's almost like part of your DNA, and it kind of like a, almost like a segue into another project you just finished recently. But where did all your love of country western and just that whole, that I guess that whole milieu come from? Well, I grew up in Oregon, obviously, and um, I grew up in the, the the wilds of Oregon, in a forest area. So everybody listened to country western. My dad, particularly, was a big country western fan. He could sing all the songs: Hank Williams, Patsy Cline, all that stuff. Hank Thompson. So that was sort of my growing up. And when I go into high school and college, nobody really wanted to hear country western. You know, it was all rock and roll and and rhythm and blues and stuff like that. So it's something that I really was um, embedded deep in my soul. And I I, I bought a um, the entire works of Hank Williams on a uh, a flea market kind of thing and I started listening to that music and it is so fucking great the, the old Hank Williams sound I mean just like two guitars and a drum and that's it just the barest of, of essentials but the the soul and the, the spirit of the character was so powerful and you lose that today in all this hip hop music you know it's it's really uh, raw stuff and I animation it looks so great with that kind of music it's a great union uh, so that's what I want to do. I mean, I don't know if the film's going to be a huge hit. Nobody really likes old-time country western music. But at this point in my career and my life, I really prefer doing films that I want to do. And it's not really market. <laughs> well, it's not really marketable, but that's what I love to do. You had mentioned that you only want, only want to you know, create films that, that you want to make. And, and, I, and I've heard for many years that filmmakers should only make films that they want to watch and see. You know, that's sort of like an old, I think, um, sort of piece of advice that filmmakers give out to like aspiring filmmakers because um, 
if you want to see it, the odds are others will probably want to see it too. You know, if you try to make films that you think other people will want to see, then I think you're asking for problems, you know? So. Well, in the past, I have um, sort of listened to the audience yeah. and try to, try to hear what they want to see and then do 50-50, do what I, 50 what I want to see and 50 what the audience wants to see. But um, uh, because there were some sex things I want to put in, I thought, oh, boy, no one's, you know, no one's going to buy that. Right. It's never going to get in a cinema. I'll buy it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was always, um, you know, d d trying well, to compromise. Yeah, comp yeah. thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but now um, this is just pure Bill Plimpton. I mean, That's this great. is as close yeah. to my soul. No sex in it. But uh, it, it, actually, no, there is. They're prostitutes. It's all about a whorehouse. So there is some sex in there. So uh, this is really much more close, closer to my 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 roots and my feelings about uh humor and film very cool well tell us a little bit about how this project with jackie green came along because i mean i know you're accustomed to me giving you a lot of praise but i have mm -hmm. to say i think this latest collaboration you did with them some of the strongest work of your career wow and i was absolutely floored by it but yeah for people don't out there who don't know it's basically it's a couple of music videos that are almost like an anthology with a little like almost like interstitial programming almost by bill to kind of connect all the dots and I was just floored by it because it's got incredible music, incredible visuals, a wide range of different styles. Like mm -hmm. a lot of different classic Bill Plimpton styles, whether it's in colored pencil or Sharpies or whatever the case might be. But it seemed like having the music as a jumping off point, but no screenplay that you had to worry about. It just unleashed your imagination. So first and foremost, congratulations. But uh, how did this project get underway? Well, let me go back a little bit. I, I've always done music videos. I love doing music videos simply because, uh, like Slide, music and, and animation work very well together as, as, as uh, uh, storytelling and just, just fun watching. So I've, I've done Madonna. I've done Weird Al Yankovic, Kanye West, and some other people, too. Uh, so this isn't the first time I've done it. But the original... Uh, origins of this project was my cousin, whose name is Christian Valenowith, lives out in Sacramento, and he's a big fan of Jackie Green. He went to all the shows. In fact, he played it at one of his birthday parties. And so he kept telling him, oh, you got to use Bill Plimpton. You got to check out Bill Plimpton. And so he finally gave me a call and said, I'm doing this major music video movie, a half hour mu uh, music video movie. And he wanted me to do it, which I thought was fantastic. First of all, because I love the music, and second of all, because I love doing music videos. So he gave me six songs, and um, and as you said, I wanted to do a different technique, a different style for each song, so that they stand alone, they can show by themselves. Plus, uh, I had a wraparound story that sort of um, showed Jackie on tour in a bus and stopping at these little bars on the side of the road. Real, the way it was the old days, you know. <laughs> it's uh, almost photorealistic, out. a style I'd never really seen from you before. I was like, whoa. Yeah, I was going to ask you, yeah. was there any rotoscoping there? or <laughs> A lot of rotoscoping, okay, yeah. yes, yes. Which is something I, I haven't seen you really do much. I love rotoscoping. Yeah. Rotoscoping is really, uh, can be great. It yeah. also can be terrible. Right. But uh, if you do it right, it looks great. So I wanted it to feel like an old 50s movie, you know, it's kind of tinted brown and not right. a lot of color in it and so that that is a story that these music videos are s supplanted into the uh into this this longer story of, of him yeah touring around as the james bus. said if you are a fan of bill's work over perhaps the past 10 or 15 years i, I you can almost see all of the films you've done in the past that's right <laughs> 10 to 15 years in this in this a in little character music cameos videos. like a little yeah. characters that you might recognize from like even like the tune it's like oh i know that character yeah so you're right yeah, it's right. not yet yeah, not back. just the styles but uh -huh. uh, of animation that you've sort of ex um, explored over the years but also some of the characters i i think i saw in one of the music videos the the leading star of Cheaton in there or a, a woman that looked very similar yes, to her <laughs> yeah 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 no, so, I, I had to pull up a lot of yeah. a lot of, lot of characters because it was uh, uh, many, many cast members, cast yeah. of thousands, yes. I should say. <laughs> but I feel like if you're a Bill Putnam fan, though, it's great. It's like a little archaeological dig through a lot of your shorts and features. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was just absolutely floored by it. But when you're approaching something with, the, with that many, like, I guess with, when you're allowed the opportunity to explore with a uh, story that much range of styles, how do you go about figuring out what gets colored pencils, what gets ballpoint pen, what gets mm -hmm. Sharpie, what gets just regular pencils? Well, I listened to the song many times, and I kind of 
lay on this couch here and close my eyes and imagine what how it would look. And for example, there's one called Tupelo, mm -hmm. and um, the beat was so strong, so direct, and it sounded like someone walking to a his death at a prison, you know, just a do 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 the walk of death kind of thing. So I thought, why don't I just do a character walking to Tupelo, and that's really where that idea was spawned. And so I I took the walking character. I didn't f actually didn't uh, rotoscope that one, although it looks rotoscoped. That was actually just out of my head. But I tried to figure out how many ways could I have the the motion the walking motion using it with animals with with machines with uh, different perspectives and different surrealist ideas and so that's i think it's one of the strongest pieces because that beat just gets you in your head and you watch this guy walking and you think well that would be boring three minutes a guy walking but no it gets really crazy and the one at one point in the film uh, i took all of my drawings of heads going way back, you know, 20 years ago, and gave this guy a different head for maybe every three frames. <laughs> yeah, I, I slowed it down and watched oh, you it. Did. I tried to watch it frame by frame, and I was like, oh, I know that character. Yeah. Oh, I know that. It was really fun. Yeah. So I think we used almost 200 heads. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy's head, I mean, it's a total drug drug trip. This, yeah. His heads are just keep changing. Now, when did you? Uh, how did you go about picking which blues legends to include? I noticed, for people that don't know, Bill's superb at doing caricatures or yeah. just portraits of uh, public figures but you got great drawings of a robert johnson and people like right. that in there Thank and you. so but it was fun to see you really slow down and do just like these exquisite portraits of these legendary mm -hmm. figures yeah well one of the other songs um uh was written by willie dixon actually so we wanted to put willie dixon in there and then we got a bunch of other like you say robert johnson these old blues legends uh, i have to be honest with you i did not draw those <gasps> yeah that was drawn by my uh, art assistants and i got the photographs and i said you know just trace it off the the light box and, and draw them and they, they worked really well they look really good should have just taken credit for all their work no i can't <laughs> do that <laughs> <laughs> now another video I really loved is you one that incorporates Satan, but throughout the video we see basically you drawing in fast motion where you'll see the drawing come into place and then the colors kind of wash across the frame. Yeah, yeah. How did you get that idea? Well, that idea was actually a crutch because uh, I would draw it on the light box with the camera over over my uh, shoulder, and uh, I draw for you know like two seconds and then I'd stop and click a couple frames of film, draw another two seconds. So the cool thing about that was I did the whole shot in about um, an hour. And that's, if I had to animate that shot, it's almost like 20 seconds to 30 seconds. Right. That'd take me a week. So I did in, a, in an hour what I would have taken for a week. So basically, it was a short, a major shortcut. And there was like individual frames where you would see your hand I know. kind of flash in there, which is kind of a, a nice aesthetic. You know, it kind well, of Well, if you ever to... see animation before they had digital right with a big camera stand yeah and the animators would get late at night they're drinking and you'd <laughs> catch their hands in the film once in a while so it's kind of a throwback to yeah. that old that old uh old 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 days of animation yeah. and i was just curious to see if people saw the hands you know because they're only in there for two frames yeah three no, frames I, I caught him i was like oh yeah. there's bill's head <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's just an absolute joy to watch and even as much as as proud as i am of cheating mm -hmm. this might be be even better than cheating. I, just Whoa. something about it being just so short and so melodic and just yeah. so visceral and so exciting. I just I found myself getting completely caught off guard by it. It just seemed like you were having a hell of a lot of fun. There was in the process. It was a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, and if people are interested, we're having a show, a free show of the entire music video, along with the music videos I did for Madonna and Kanye West and Weird Al Yankovic, on the twenty eighth of March at the SVA Cinema on 23rd Street. It's free, just show up and come on in and we're gonna have a live performance by Said Jackie. Seven Green. or? Yeah, seven, thank you. By Jackie Green himself, the man by himself. And uh, he'll be f performing two songs. Very cool. So it'll, maybe I'll draw him while he's drawing. Now, something. if someone doesn't live in the New York area, I know that Jackie Green's already posted one or two of the videos on his channel on YouTube. Yes. Is there a plan to release the entire anthology? Yeah, of course there is. I don't know what the situation is uh, for release, uh, whether they're going to release it on a DVD or release it in um, you know, Netflix or something like that. That's their gig. I, I'm out of that, that circuit. 
but I'm sure they want to promote it. And we're inviting a lot of press there, so hopefully there'll be a ton of press. Hopefully they like it as much as you guys like it. Yeah. Well, it got Adam and I talking uh, before we started recording about how cool it would be to actually get you to do another anthology movie where you basically do a couple short over a couple of years, but find a through line to bring them all together and release oh. it as a feature. Then, yeah. You essentially it would be a oh. way to sort of release each short individually, yeah, yeah. get a return on that, bring them use together. that money to reinvest in the next one. You know, that's but then at the end idea. of a two or three year period, you would have, you know, maybe seventy minutes worth of content, yeah. which could be edited together right, and right, released right. you know theatrically as a I did feature. that with uh, 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 Mondo Plimpton actually oh, yeah. it wasn't a big success but I didn't really do it very well so right. uh, that is a, a wonderful idea I should what year was Mondo Plimpton uh, I think that was uh, what was it John 94 95 right. yeah something like that pre YouTube before John was here yeah before, pre John <laughs> John's even more important than YouTube you, <laughs> I was here for Mondo oh you were okay well I take that back John well, I, one thing that I just kept thinking about, I, I was able to watch it on my big HD TV mm -hmm. with headphones on late at night, dark. It's oh just such God. a hypnotic experience. And it got me thinking about other, you know, films, I mean, dating back to something like Fantasia, you know, where uh -huh. music inspires imagery in your mind. Yes, and, yes. and it just got me thinking how, in a way, animation is the perfect medium to pair with music. Absolutely. And I almost feel like your animation in particular is is perfect because it does take you on sort of this visual journey mm -hmm. that your mind almost couldn't create on its own. And well, that you know, allows you to have that immersive experience while listening. Jackie Green is famous for playing with m members of the Grateful Dead. And that's the kind of music he wanted. And when he came into our studio to inspire us to make this, he said, make it weird and psychedelic. Yeah. So... I, I think this is a perfect stoner film. Yeah. I think if you want to light up while yeah. you're watching it, uh, or even drink up while you're watching right. it, it really enhances yeah. the the Whiskey craziness. would go well with it, but weed would go well with it too. And, 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 I, and I like both. Yeah. <laughs> Do it together. What the hell? Why exactly. Not? Well, it could be like what uh, uh, I was. I recently discovered that there is a 1977 um, animated film called the. Uh, fantastic, the Fantastic Animation Festival. It was actually released on the same day theatrically as Star Wars. But because mm. of Star Wars, it yeah. kind of got completely lost. And it was yeah. essentially a compilation of award-winning 70s animated films. Mm -hmm. And it has never been released or available since, really. It's wow. one of those things that kind of just disappeared. Mm -hmm. But it became, in the late 70s and early 80s, apparently... Uh, a sort of midnight stoner film that theaters would play yeah. and people would go in and watch these <laughs> fantastic, crazy, psychedelic animated yeah. shorts all kind of put together. 2001, you said it in the marketing. Like, you know, there yeah. was, it was like the, the ultimate trip. Like, yeah. They wanted people to take yeah. drugs and go see 2001. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But getting back to, uh, to your work, I know you've got a lot of other things cooking in the oven or that are finished and about to come out. We've got Cop Dog, which we are waiting for the iTunes release date that on there, but that might be a couple of months. But you have a big opportunity to show up your stuff on TV in the near mm -hmm. future. Tell us a little bit, well, at least what you can yeah. about that. Well, I, I think I can tell it all because I believe Fox has promoted it pretty well. Um, I'm good friends with uh, Matt Groening. He's another Oregon boy. Uh, I, I knew his dad really well, Homer, Homer Groening. And he's a wonderful filmmaker. Anyway, uh, I, I hang out with Matt occasionally and uh, he suggested I do some couch gags for the Simpsons and I said yeah I'd love to do that so I over the past five or six years I've done I think maybe five or six uh, opening couch gags so this time I went to him with I had an idea for one and it's a um, um, a smash up or mash up of your face and and Homer Simpson and um, they went crazy for the idea and so we did that uh, around Christmas time actually and uh, they're probably going to premiere it next weekend, next Sunday night, 8 o'clock. It's a two-minute long um, couch gag, which they've never done a couch That's gag. twice gag. the length, typically, yeah. right? Correct. Yeah, it's very long. So they really love it. They told me, go to go crazy with it. So this is another another piece of stoner animation. <laughs> so would that be system. Sunday the 25th or Sunday the April 1st? I think 25th. I think okay. it is the 25th now, yeah. yeah. And that's the same night that, uh, what's her name, um, Tempest, uh, no, who, Stormy. Yeah. Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels is going to be on 60 Minutes. Oh, shit. So uh, we have some tough competition there. Yeah. 
I, I first became familiar with her when I saw Forty Old Version. I was like, I'm gonna look that girl up. Yeah, she's got a uh, she's got a large body of work. <laughs> yeah, very good, very good. <laughs> no, but I absolutely love your couch kegs. I think my favorite couch keg I've ever seen though is with the uh, the channels changing, and then you had that one shot with the giant and the family on his shoulder, and something like yeah. that giant just boom, boom, yeah, coming yeah, along. Yeah. I was like, where the hell did that image come from? But just <laughs> made me made me howl. But getting back to Cop Dog, what is it about the dog that keeps you coming back to this character, you know, five movies in? I feel like now for like 15 years you've been flirting yeah. with these with this character and you come mm -hmm. back periodically. Yeah. Well, the dog is a, a perennial fan favorite. Uh, whenever I do a signing or a, a appearance or a, a master class, everybody wants me to draw the dog. So uh, I'm happy for that. I mean, the, the dog has been uh, one of my, my greatest characters. And so... Um, I got the new one called Cop Dog, and I think that was inspired by a lot of my trips to airports and the hassle going through customs and, and inspection, the x-rays, and I see dogs there, you know, sniffing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I should have put that in the film. That would have been funny. <laughs> and um, so I, I, he was, the dog inspired me to make Cop Dog, where he, he uh, works at an airport uh, sniffing for drugs, and he finds this satchel of drugs, and then it, the bag is torn, and drugs fill up the airport and all the airplanes, and total mayhem uh, happens. Now, for the hardcore fans out there, are you ever actually going to apply a name to the dog? Uh, I've had some great names, but I never felt a need that it was that important to do it. Uh, I think when I say a guard dog, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, why well, it's like how it goes from guard dog to a to hot no to a guide dog to you know. hot dog, horn dog, and now cop dog. Yeah, yeah, and, and then got, global jam dog. Yeah, global jam dog. So yeah, there's been a bunch of them. He's he's very does very. I had well. a, a little technical question, um, cop dog, and also one of the music videos in <clears throat> the collection that mm -hmm. you just did are in the four by three aspect ratio, not the widescreen. Was there mm -hmm. a sort of creative sort of inspiration for those choices? No, basically we screwed up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was some. Uh, uh, Wendy, yeah. I, I know I yeah. don't run the technical side right. of it. Wendy does. And, um, you know, my drawings pretty much all relate to all aspect ratios. Right. So there's no real border on my, my drawings. So I don't know why that happened, oh. but um, is your pad four by three? Is it already kind of in that academy ratio? I don't or? have a pad. Gotcha. You mean my my Cintiq kind of pad? <laughs> Whatever these uh, the ream of paper is that you draw. Oh, here upon. it is, right here. It's. Oh, that's not it. That's not it. Uh, you have the 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 hole punch, right? That you yeah. The the registration. But the paper punch. is pretty big. I, yeah. I keep it pretty uh, tight inside the paper, so there's no real borders. Uh, I know that in the. In the 80s and 90s, when television was 4x3, yeah. films were widescreen, a lot of animation studios would do what they called an open mat, where they would animate, animate it 4x3, mm -hmm. but not putting anything too important in the top and yeah. the bottom so that they could crop it or for it theatrical, it, yeah. but still have the f it fill the full TV frame. Right. So, yeah, right, I didn't right. know if there was John any Carpenter kind of says that's decision like, like that's that. That's the budget. Uh, if yeah. you want to make your movie look more expensive than it actually was, just mat it and make it 2.35 2. to 1, uh, and it immediately looks like some big colossal yeah, like right. CinemaScope <laughs> widescreen production. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Gotcha. Well, anything else cooking in the oven that you want to plug? I do, actually. Speaking of music videos... I've just been commissioned to do a anti NRA uh, music video. Oh. Um, it's called "You Know Who You Are," and um, I can't think of the name of the songwriter. I just heard about him yesterday. Uh, he's not a big name, but the song is excellent. It's really fantastic. And I have a child who goes to school, and obviously, I have very uh, strong feelings about you know guns in schools. <laughs> So I thought I would I would do it, and I'm doing a pro bono, which I usually don't do. Wow! So I don't want a lot of musicians calling me up and saying, "Yeah, hey, can you do our music video?" Yeah, now you've opened the door to every political cause out there. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> it's but an this, important cause. But this one is very uh, uh, a very great song and a very important uh, topic, and so and it couldn't be more timely. Yeah, with it really going is. On. It's really got to yeah. be um, uh, kept in front of the public rather than just being knocked away by some is there an organization that is sort of sponsoring this no or? it's just uh, just a bunch of independent people oh wow um uh the uh producer called me up and said they, they wanted me to do something and we may be using uh, ralph bakshi too as part of a 
part of the uh, production, but uh, he hasn't committed 100% okay. yet. So we will know. But it should be done in about a month. We're going to crank it out as fast as we can. And then I'm doing a, a series of cartoons about Trump, Donald Trump. And we're using his... Um, his uh, speeches and his words, his dialogue as sort of the springboard, and then I'm doing animation that either contradicts it or sort of shows how stupid uh, his, his comments are. Just don't talk about his possible parentage or the color of his hair, because that's how <laughs> Bill Maher got in trouble on his show. Really? Show yeah, he got, yeah, he got sued, and they settled it out of court, but he did get sued for comparing Trump to some sort of giant orange orangutan, and yeah, he took it very personally. <laughs> What's the uh, the parentage uh, issue? Oh, he said that he was, because there's some sort of like giant ape, the one that has like the big, like the, the oh, flesh yeah, around yeah, the face, yeah, yeah. and it has that like crazy bright orange fur, Yeah, and he just kept saying that he was the son of one of these things uh. and it uh, pissed him off <laughs> and i think this is before he even ran for president this was a long time this yeah, I like think two was, or three years ago it was, i think it was even longer yeah yeah it wow, was wow, wow, prior wow. to any ambitions to run for president trump was just i think trump and bill maher do not get along yeah <laughs> and it was yeah, more yeah. about a, a a history there than anything else well, I, I, as a bald man who's decided yeah. to embrace my baldness <laughs> instead of disguising it People who do choose to disguise their baldness are very sensitive about their hair. So yeah. you can t make fun of their weight, make fun of the way they talk, but don't make fun of their hair. They will freak well, I, out. I remember an interview years ago where he said if he ever became president, he would shave his head. I wish I could find this. <laughs> Whoa, because can you get that to <laughs> I will, us? I will look. Well, he and Vince McMahon had that wrestling match. Yeah. And whoever won had to shave the, got to shave the other person's That's head. That's right, that yeah. too. Yeah, but there was something about that about, with him running for president as well, like, or if he won, because I didn't think, I think he had no. No, I bet my guys could find it. They have access okay. to a lot of uh, his audio. Yeah, because that could be so an interesting. That would be know. a nice episode. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see if that's if that hasn't been fully erased from the internet by Trump's <laughs> minions. <laughs> Well, Bill, we can't thank you enough for coming on Wrong Real and talking about all the stuff you're working on. And when you get a gap in your busy schedule, I've got a little idea for uh, my YouTube channel. But obviously, okay. it's not a um, it's not a pressure cooker situation. Right, but yeah, right. when you, when you have a gap, I have actually been doing some uh, some soul searching about it, and I think I've uh, I got an idea that hopefully might grab your attention. Okay, and. Um uh, you know, t soon, tell me sooner rather than later. Sooner to stop recording. Because sometimes I like to percolate it and gotcha. just kind of pre-visualize it. And then uh, maybe in a month I can whip it out. Yeah, as soon as we press stop, I'll make my little pitch. Okay, very good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Adam, where can people find you online if they want to keep talking? Uh, I'm on Twitter. Uh, my only uh, presence on social media, you can find me at Adam Rakoff. And uh, if you follow me, I try to follow everybody back. So feel free. And I love to talk animation and comics and Full Metal Jacket, Stanley Kubrick, all those <laughs> things. <laughs> so would love to, uh, yeah, get to know you and further discuss these things. Excellent. Mr. Holdery, where can the people find Bill online? Because I know Bill <laughs> might not know. <laughs> Plimtoons.com. Plimtoons.com. And that Twitter is just at Plimtoons. Yeah, Excellent. Make sure you check out his Facebook page, which is just Bill Plimpton. I think his Twitter handle is at Stormy Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all need to collaborate. After you're working with uh, Julia Ann, Stormy Daniels might be That's next right. on the I list. I forgot about Julia Ann. Yeah. yeah, I will never forget Julia Ann. That was yeah. a pleasure and a privilege getting to. We just we got to visit the penthouse headquarters in L.A. So that alone, as somebody who grew up in the era of magazines, I was like, this is a, the culmination of a lifelong dream. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, that was yeah. a lot of fun. In any case, we hope you all have enjoyed this podcast. Please consider giving our channel a subscribe but you can find us on facebook twitter or my personal profile at colbrax and coming up in the near future we got adam shartoff from film Max radio who's interviewed bill i think three times on his podcast wow. but he's going to come on and talk about Stuart rosenberg's movies and i can't remember what else we have in the near future so i'll just let y'all let it percolate and wonder and so on and so forth but can't thank you for listening and as always onwards and upwards